So this one I'm going to talk about Aim Higher, how to be a very great event manager. Um, here are the things I'm going to be talking about. Oh, there we go, lovely. Uh, get organised, then think about task management, timing, timing. Sponsors, venue, food and drink, content and event promotion. So let's kick in straight away with the first one, which is getting organised. No, it's not about a bondage. I know you could probably get that here if you wanted to, but there we are. <laughs> So, this is actually meant to re represent a little bit of red tape. So, well, you've decided to become a group leader or you've been asked to be a group leader, congratulations. Next step is to then sign off your life with Salesforce, to then uh, say you agree to all the wonderful things, you won't say the things you're not meant to say, all that stuff. Then comes the mm, master's degree challenge to then sign up to the current uh, expenses process. <laughs> I know they're in beta to go and bring a new one, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, then after you've done that, then you can get yourself onto your own uh, chatter group, the, the group that you're actually looking after. Then comes Bevy as well, get your profile onto that. Get into the other chatter groups, the all uh, community group leaders and community group announcements as well, so you start hearing the things. And then it's time to get organised. So those are the things to kick you off straight away. Let's get the, the organisation piece there. And then you can start planning. Oh, come on, click that Good. So the next thing is task management. Strangely enough, events do not magically happen. Do they? You actually have to put a little bit of effort in place. You have to think about things. You have got to get organised and get some tasks done. Now this is a point where you could turn around and say, you know, you, a lot of people come together as leaders and you play to your strengths. Some people might be really good at the planning side of things, some might like people might just stand up and, and talk or be the MC, some are really good with sponsors. That's great, absolutely play to strengths. However, it does come a point whereby if you are in these leadership positions, this is an opportunity for you to do something a little bit extra to your day job. If you don't have the opportunity, normally in your day job, to you know, stand up in front and do presentations, well maybe this happens to be a format where you can do that, and you can give that a go, and you're in a safe environment for you to try. Because then, if, if you do mess it up, you know you've got people around you who will help, and who will support you. So this is a great learning opportunity, and a safe place. But also, if you have got co-leaders, and I appreciate not all groups do, but this is a time to also share the tasks as well. Do not be that single point of failure. Nobody likes those in businesses, so don't do it in your own group if you can avoid it. So if you have uh, an amend you need to make onto the Bevy system, you don't just leave it to the one person to do. You can also, somebody else can log in and make those changes. It's important to be able to share those tasks, share the responsibilities, to learn. Don't assume one person's always going to do it. And make sure you do do it, otherwise, well, it doesn't magically happen. Did yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the cat did it. So for that, you need a little bit of technology on your side because we're kind of into the world of technology and it can be very, very helpful. So I want to share with you what we do with London Admins, the things that we use. So first of all, we've got here the, uh, the Bevy group. So this is where we use a little format here to actually show, you know, this is who we are, this is what we're about, uh, so that people understand that we are a admin group and uh, we are actually an in-person group as well. So if you sign up, please show up. We also use our chatter group as well. We use that to, to us all announce. There's a link there to the Bevy group as well and for general membership as well. We also have our own Slack group, and that's internal to us, is where we can use it to chat away and think about ideas and uh, you know, share, share options and things. And then we also have our own Twitter group as well for a little bit of promotion. But we also have one other little gem. And this is what every single business runs on, really. I know we're in Salesforce, but what you do is you have a little spreadsheet. Oh, come on. At least it's a clip, right? <laughs> yes, it's, it's, it's in a Google Doc. Yeah. And that's close enough. User group leader account, so it's okay. Um, oh. 
So this, well, the original version of this was created by Paul because actually Paul helped as being a leader for London admins before he defected over to Amsterdam. <laughs> And he started to put, and, he, and the boys back then, it was before myself and Claire actually uh, got involved in the group, and the boys, the rest of the boys were just a little bit disorganised, a little bit on the fly, like, so, it's, uh, we said we're going to do the group next week, what should we do? Yeah. So Paul thought, come on, we have to be a little bit more organised, let's get planning. So he put together a version of this spreadsheet, and it helps to think, and this, is, this really is ours, by the way, we, <laughs> we know month by month, what we're doing, where we're we going, who's sponsoring us, who in our internal team is going to be looking after them as well. We also know what sort of capacity we're looking at, whether we've got a theme or a swag. Uh, then we've got the, the speaker options, whether we're going to have a break, who's our admin interview as well. It's all there. This is just one of the sheets. We also have other sheets on there too, which has got food. And we've got one which has potential sponsors, potential speakers. It's all there. Again, it's none of this hiding thing. It's all there so that if Claire needed to pick it up, she could, and she could run with it. So it's about sharing that knowledge, sharing the, the information and making it easy. So, you know, the world runs on spreadsheets. So you've got that. You've got a little bit of organisation now. Let's move on to the next one. Timing. So, you've got your group. You've decided you're going to do it. Now think about the cadence. Are you going to be doing it once every quarter? Are you going to do it every month? What, what's going to work for you and for your particular group as well? And then think about, especially in, in our area of London, well, you might not be alone. There might be other groups out there as well. And so, when should you do your group? Because as we have found, we're not just a member of the group that we're leading, we are cross-pollinating over lots of other groups as well. So you want to go and hang out with your, your, your developer colleagues or your wit ladies or whatever. It is you know, important, so find out when in the month they would normally do it and see if you can slot in and so everyone can share. And that's what we do. So now you've got an idea of how frequent, when in the month you're going to do it as well, then what time of day? Because some groups actually meet during the afternoon some people will meet in the evenings. What suits your members? Think about that, because at the end of the day, you can get people to turn up to this, so make it easy for them. So think about when you're actually going to do it. And then remember to be flexible, because even though you might say, well, we're always going to be the third Thursday of the month, well, what happens if suddenly there is a person from Salesforce that's coming into town and going, hey, I'm in town, it'd be really great if I could drop in and, and share some content with you. You're not going to turn around and go, well, I'm very sorry, I'm going to do it on the third Thursday of the month. Could you not pop in then? Yeah. Yeah, so be flexible. If there's some really great content opportunities, take advantage of this. You know, it's important. You know, give, give that a chance. So that's timing. So you've got your timing sorted. Now, Sponsors. Now, if you're a brand new group, people aren't really going to know about you, so you've got to promote yourself to get members on board. So sponsors might feel a bit like, well, what are you about? You know, why should I sponsor you? What do I get out of it? You've got, to, you've got to think about that yourself. You've got to figure out what you're actually going to be. And so at the beginning, you might need to take advantage of the expenses option so that you can manage your, manage your group. But as you evolve and as you move forward and you know, this is who we are, this is what we represent, this is what we'd like to do, then people get to understand that. And they understand, okay, if you're, you're an admins group, great, that's, that's amazing, I really want to promote or, or talk about my product at, uh, at your event, can I come along? And so these responses will come and actually approach you if, you're, if you have that ability or not reach out. So once you have got sponsors knocking on your door, think about, well, what is it that you're actually going to offer to them? because you now need to have that sort of sales conversation. So for the London admins in, in particular, what we have turned up is that uh, our, and it's not even a package, it's just a conversation. We'll turn around and say, great, thank you so much for the, the, the offer to sponsor us. This is what we can offer to you. And it's a, well, like the welcome, we'll do a thank you to our sponsor, X, you know. They're allowed then to do a blag for about five minutes. This is us, this is our pitch, this is who we are. We also uh, allow them to come along and bring a banner, so some promotion, swag, because, you know, we all love swag, and 
also we will give them the opportunity to do maybe a 20 minute presentation. It may or may not happen during that particular night, it might happen in a future date, but, and this is the biggest thing actually, this is not a sales pitch. Our members are very, very savvy. They do not, and they will very clearly see, they do not want a sales pitch. They do not want to turn around and go, hello, we're product X, and we're going to sell you all these things. You're like, no, 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 no. Okay, except for Kevin. So, <laughs> thing, so make sure that your presentation that the, the sponsors are going to give is going to be useful for the members and what they're going to listen to. Make sure that it is uh, maybe a, a customer reference. See it in action. What are the features and benefits? So, you know, be very clear about that. In return, the sponsors have responsibility to you. And their responsibility is to maybe cover the cost for the venue and the food and the drink. Because we're not a profit uh, body, we just need to make sure the costs are covered. And they need to know that. So that's their responsibilities. So now comes venue. And you're probably wondering why I've got a doorman and a dog. I didn't know Mia was coming, great. Anyway. Probably a friend. So, <laughs> venues. Venues are very big topics for us. Certainly, uh, you know, it all depends on your size of your group or what sort of venue you might need. So first of all, when you're looking about venues, make sure it is accessible and easily accessible. That might mean a location that is easy for people to get to and actually get into as well. You never know. Then once you've got there, you have to talk with the venue themselves and talk to security because they will have security arrangements, fire arrangements, health and safety policies that you will have to follow. You might even have uh, to follow insurance or anything like that. So all these things you have to consider. Certainly in London, we have to provide lists of names before uh, about a few days beforehand. We might even have to ask our people to provide photo ID. If you know this, give information straight away to your members. And then, um, so you've got the security side of things as well. Then look out the layout, look at the space. How's it gonna work for you? Can you have spaces there to put chairs out? Or is it workshops? Is there AV that's gonna work as well? Because you know that can slow things down. And is there space then for food and drink? Because when you walk into a venue, you need to make it work for you and your members, especially if they're new, you need a space where you can have the food and drink so people can move over there to talk to people as they're you know, grabbing a beer. It's a social thing, it's a networking space. And why have I got a picture of a dog? Well, unfortunately in London, being a bit of a, a place of weather, and we don't, whether the weather's gonna be hot or cold, we don't know, but air con in buildings is quite challenging. Now normally in an office space, it's okay during the day because you've got a certain amount of people. And suddenly in the evening, you've got 70 people on this one space. It gets a bit warm. So think about if you can try and ask for the air con to be on longer. Think about your people and how many people are coming in. And then think about the timings. What time are you allowed in and then get out? Some of these are work offices. You have to uh, remember that side. Food. <laughs> so, Everybody had this thing, well, once upon a time, a user group is all about beer and pizza. That's great, but in our world of more enlightenment, people have dietary requirements. And actually, does beer and pizza work? We might like wine and fruit juices. So, you know, you might want to think about sandwiches or fruit or um, other, you know, sushi, other dietary requirements so that you can cater for lots of different needs. So don't just think beer and pizza is always going to be the answer. However, did I mention cake? <laughs> you might notice a theme here. <laughs> I think cake is very important. And I should, <laughs> it's in my life. Um, I think it's uh, a, a brilliant way to bring people together and celebrate stuff. We celebrate London World Tours, we celebrate special birthdays, we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate our own birthdays, not just special people's birthdays as well. And it's a wonderful way to, so, to bring people together, have a bit of sugar, and carry on with the fun. 
So we do this a lot, and this is lovely. And then, then there's content. Now we've had Ankit talk about the theme of content, so I'm not going to dip very big into it. It's just more about the logistics side of things. So think about your type of group, think about the type of content you might want to talk about. If it's a developer, you might go deep in code of side of things. When it comes to admin, we like clicks. So, you know, think about the types of stuff you want to, to talk about. And then think maybe, you know, go around the subject as well, because then you can learn and share from other people. And then think about the format of your show. When we started doing Ad London Admins, we had three talks during one night. Great, great content, wow. Problem, it was a heartache, it was a headache, it's a real tough time trying to get three talks every single time. It was hard work for us, and then we were also finding that people, because we have an evening slot, people having to go home. So the last speaker didn't have much of a, a, an audience. So people are going, I really, I really want to hear, but I've got to go, I've got to go. So that was tough, that was tough. So we went, you know, we're not doing it anymore. And so we just do two main talks, and then we do our interview with an admin as well. Much shorter piece, but it also gets to know people as well. So that's lovely. And also, again, be flexible with your type of content. We also do a speed dating thing. We we bring groups together. Uh, I don't think we've actually brought people together. No, no. Um, we do workshops as well. It doesn't always have to be the same format. So, you know, think about all the things. But I suppose the biggest thing is remember, this isn't about you. It's about your members. It's about what your members want to hear and want to do. So take that feedback and think about what they want to listen to. And this is where you might actually get people to offer doing content as well, which is great because then you just sit down and listen and just organize and I don't have to talk. And next thing, a bit of promotion. I've talked about it already. We have a Twitter account. So tweet beforehand, tweet during, tweet afterwards, so that people know what you're about to do and what you're sharing about. Because people like that, it really helps to people to network and learn about each other. And then also you can use the uh, chatter group as well, upload your slides afterwards as well, share that knowledge, and it helps to promote the group and what you can do next and what sort of things you cover, it always helps. And some other groups uh, video all their sessions as well, choose to put it onto YouTube, completely up to you if you want to do that. So, last slide, and I know I'm racing through because I've been told I've got to go quick. <sighs> Remember, did you realise that signing up to be a group leader, you were going to become a salesperson? You were going to become someone's therapist? Or a mentor? Positive light. <laughs> that you were going to be an improvisation artist as well? That you were going to be a cleaner, possibly? Because <laughs> that happens as well. But the biggest thing is, because of the impact they make, not everything that you do when you put on an event, you are a shaman. So thank you very much. <laughs> Any quick questions? We do. Okay, go on. You said about sponsors. Uh, my question is because Salesforce, because that's what I struggle with. It. Salesforce provides a budget. Is your group so big that you run out of it, and that's why you need sponsors, <laughs> or is it just sponsors in terms of someone giving us office space and not like, because um, uh, yeah, the admin group on the Berlin on the other side. So uh, we do it like coexist. So you know, they give us the space and we have the budget, but in that way we are not dependent on the sponsor. You know what I'm trying to ask. So. We are incredibly fortunate yeah. that people are queuing up to be sponsors, mm. which is lovely. Yeah. And it also means I don't have, or we don't have to go through the expenses process, yeah. which is not so lovely. <laughs> so we're, we're incredibly lucky in that. And that is because London is such a big, vibrant city. You know, we are in this very fortunate position of our location. We have been going for four and a half years as well. We are known. We have drawn a big crowd. And, and that naturally brings, it brings the learning, you know? So that's good. Um, so with the, the sponsors and the insurance, that kind of triggered me. Did you, are you doing this as private persons or did you have to set up like a, a legal entity? For this? Yeah. 
we don't have any um, that sort of thing. So we will, for the sponsorship side of things, we will either say to the sponsors, "Look, you're covering it." If uh, I have literally provided the this this is the what your shopping list. I want to have this, this, and this, and this. Go buy it. Or they will go, oh no, we can cover all the venue, we'll do all the food, great, because we're going to their place and they're hosting as well, super. I have had uh, opportunities where I've done all the buying and then given them my bank details and they paid, so it's all good. It's completely flexible, again, it's what, however you can do it really. And there's nothing about a setting up a business and doing anything official in that respect. It is we just... Don't hold their money no. for any period of time. I know, we literally just cover our costs and, and whether it's a, I'll, I'll do it, I'll, I'll organise it, you just pay me back, then, then that's fine. Okay. All good? Thank you very much.